This is Off Planet Radio. Hey everybody, welcome back to Off Planet Radio, Off Planet TV. The website, in case you don't know, is offplanetradio.com. And uh, if you go over there, you'll actually get links to all the other places where we are, because we're in multiple places at the same time. And uh, that gets you iTunes, YouTube, and our Patreon site, which is patreon.com forward slash media. You can go there and um, you get to watch the first hour of this free. The second hour, we call it the full effect. You're going to have to go to Patreon to hear that. And uh, so we're going to pick it up where we left it a while back with our special guest tonight. And Emily, do you want to kind of toss in here? Sure. Hi, everybody. This is Emily Moyer, my co-host, by the way, in case you don't <laughs> know. Hi, everybody. It's great to be back. And um, so we're just going to continue rolling on down this road with Sonia Barrett here again tonight. We're, uh, we started last time the series, The Human Game, in part one, where we sort of laid out the game. And today we're going to delve into the next part, which will be the mind and sort of the tendencies of the human mind. And, you know, seeing as that um, this show has largely uh, over the years focused on mind control, we're going to get into some of that with Sonia, who my suspicion is she has a lot different take on that than some of the guests we've spoken to in the past. And one that I find myself probably coming more and more into alignment with and um, see where we go from there. And uh as always with Sonia, we enjoy it. The conversation ends somewhere completely different than where it started and where we thought it would go. So, Sonia Barrett, welcome back to Off Planet Radio. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. It's a thrill to be here with you crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a compliment from you. Absolutely. <laughs> <No>. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and in kind, Sonia, you are definitely one of the craziest people I've met. So. I, I know. I love it. That's, <laughs> that's the only reason why I want to do the show. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So, all right. So, so, yeah. So, last time we really laid out the game and people really, you know, they, they, they were delighted with the first episode you did with us, just the regular interview. And then last, the first part of the series, um, people are really enjoying it and they're looking forward to see what we do here. And so, I really... Um, wanted to get into the mind because so much of this game exists, not the whole thing, but the largest part of the game really exists in our mind. And um, I kind of want to, you know, dig into a little bit how and why that, you know, sort of how that works. And then, you know, from there kind of get into what is the mind control really about, what it's for, sort of how, 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 and the how and why of that and see where we go with that. So, um, Let's just jump right in. Sonia? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you talking to me? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm just listening. I'm like, okay, Emily, where are we going with it? Go ahead. Um, so, so we're talking about which, which mind control, which level of mind control are we talking about? Mind control that everybody talks about um, in terms of, you know, well, the conspiracy stuff, my, you know, which level of mind control? Because well, there's well, like different levels of mind, right. mind yeah, control. Yeah. So I guess first, like where I was thinking we might start is just about how much of this game that we're in, because we've kind of talked about this being a game, really has to do, it, it exists inside the mind. So maybe let's start there and then we can sort of get into um, the levels of mind control and the sort of how and the why of, of, of it, you know, how they do it, how, how the mind control is done and what the purpose of it is. But I think before we go there, we kind of, you know, have to talk about how much of this game or how much of sort of the way it appears to us is really sort of a projection of the mind or in some ways, even a figment of the imagination. Yeah, well, I think I think that would close out the whole show, that last part that you just said. Okay. It's like you answered it. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then, then, then maybe we should start with the maybe we should start with the mind control then, or you know, let's. Well, no, 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 that's fine. That, that's fine. I don't know. We'll just start wherever. I, I don't know. I'm just gonna start with whatever comes start. out of my mouth. Sounds but, good. But um, I guess in general, you know, we 
we have to look at the fact that the, the life that we live, we can say that on one level, yes, it is mind control because the life that everybody is living, or, or should I say, most people or people according to what we perceive people to be or the version of people that are here. I know I always end up having to talk all trippy because it does come down to these specific um, uh, ideas, specific concepts or, or just be more specific as to what we're talking about. And a lot of times we're so used to generalizing and lumping everything into a basket without realizing, well, wait a second, I don't even know who everybody is or what that means or, or, or is there everybody? I mean, so there's all kinds of factors. So the bottom line of it is, we know that there is a um, perception, there is a base concept of reality that um, pretty much everybody, as we know everybody to be, is operating by. Now, we can say that that is mind control, but in a way it is, because it is a pattern, um, a, a, a pattern of reality of what reality is, what it should look like, um, what we should believe about that specific perception or version of reality that everybody's mind is sort of wired for, sort of wired into. And that is uh, sort of a, <laughs> in a way, a mind control that's passed on and on and on. But after a while, nobody has to really control anybody's mind regarding that base perception because it's been seated there for such a long time that we just automatically live within the field of um, of, of that perception that was presented to us and that pattern now that our brains operate by and uh, what our minds are now locked into and operating by. So even when we talk about any kind of mind control, uh, just across the board, we have to realize that the brain looks for patterns and in one way or another, regardless of what the mind control is, um, we that, that person or that collection of people um, have, whether it be a short term or for a long term, how, whatever the process that is used, they have basically been wired in, their brains are wired into a particular pattern of operating, a pattern of reality, whatever that perception may be, whether you become the Manchurian candidate, that brain is wired now a certain way to perform a certain, uh, in a certain kind of behavior, uh, a certain kind of operation, um, and, and wired, so it is triggered by uh, different things. You know, when we look at things like the Manchurian Candidate, we're, we're looking, um, or what, what was that other movie uh, with Mel Gibson? Um, gosh, you know which movie I'm talking about with Mel, Mel Gibson? Contact? He was reading, no, Catcher in the Rye. It was all about, um, What's it called? Jeez, I can't remember. Ransom? Conspiracy. Oh, conspiracy. Uh, was it just called conspiracy, conspiracy theory or something yeah. like that? Yeah, conspiracy. Yeah. Okay. Um, but 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 when you look, it is a programming that is happening. It is a programming that is happening. And that's where the pattern forms. There's a program that is inserted, and and that's why I say it happens, it happens on different levels, on multiple uh, kinds of levels in order to get an individual or a collection of people to operate within a certain framework of belief system, a certain framework of, of a, a pattern. And that continues to be reinforced. The way our reality is, uh, the version that we seem to be um, more engaged with, more familiar with, it, everything around us reinforces that. More so, however, for people who are completely unaware, the more unaware you are is the more hooked up you are to this, you know, whatever that, that pattern or version of or, or reality of reality is and the uh, kinds of behaviors. Now, we, I mean, I mean, we can, I guess, break this all apart. I'm just sort of bringing things together as it's showing up. Um, but we, we can look at situations where uh, a whole community of people uh, may be triggered to operate a certain way because now we can use what sound waves, uh, you know, silent sound. Uh, there's because the human being, right, is is made up of what the electromagnetic electromagnetic spectrum of color, you know, color, light, and sound, and 
everything is color, light, and sound. And your brain is responding to these frequencies. And in, so it has to do with the manipulation of brainwave patterns and, and uh, those frequencies in order to create um, a certain pattern uh, of, of reality, a certain program that becomes consistent and it's there again and again. And then you have to keep reinforcing it by the environment and by the experiences. Now, what I have just said does uh, basically cover pretty much any level of mind control. Of course, we're going to take it apart, but I'm just saying at the, at the base of it is what I'm saying right now. At the base of it, this is what we're working with. So uh, I don't know if you want me to stop there for a minute. <laughs> you can't say anything to say. I, I, yeah, so yeah. I don't, on and on talking. Do you have anything to say? No. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't have anything to say. I think, Randy, do you have something? I see Randy's getting his head bob on, so. Well, one, of the, one of the noteworthy things you just said there was about pattern matching. Yeah. And specifically. Oh, I'm sorry, about what? Pattern matching. Oh, pa yes. Okay, yes. so we know from the studies that were done from the 70s forward, and I'm thinking here of Bandler and Grinder and the work on neuro-linguistic programming that we just, they, they began to discover this other type of mind control that could be used in either polarity. Because basically, NLP, you can use that not only to program yourself, which was what Silva mind control taught, but right. also to program other people by interacting with them and pattern matching in a relational sense. So when we talk about mind control, we're talking about a two-edged sword at all times. And Absolutely. I think, you know, it needs to be said time and again that <clears throat> we think of ourselves as being sort of laboratory mice. You know, there's the whole victim status that comes with waking up because you do realize that <laughs> you really have been lied to. But at the same time, all of a sudden, that very act itself interrupts the pattern. So mm -hmm. people who are waking up and people who are across the spectrum in this sometimes fall into a victim modality without realizing that what they're seeing right now is the presentment of this large reality that they think they've been lied about and how powerless they feel. But the act of interrupting the pattern and waking up in itself is actually reversing the flow of mind control. Oh, absolutely. Yes, it is about interrupting that pattern. But first, first, we have to realize this whole idea and concept of pattern and program that they, you know, it, it, they go hand in hand. Um, a pattern, everything is made of a pattern. Everything is a pattern, which is why the brain looks for it. The, the you know, the chair, the design of the chair, there is a pattern um, that exists. And I'm not just talking about the wood involved just to make the chair, but I'm speaking of the frequency itself um, is, it is a pattern. It is a, um, which is quantum physics now, it, there is a quantity of something that establishes that pattern, um, that, that energy field that supports that pattern, including this human body, including everything. So it's a realization as to why then you know, is the brain looking for patterns because it operates off of um, uh, these patterns that become uh, programs. We want to get away from being programmed because people say that, you know, well, how can I not be programmed? That's not really what it is. It's not really that. This part of us is designed that way for uh, repetitious behavior, repetitious actions. The, the, the trick here is, and I'm not getting off course, but I have to bring this up since we're talking about patterns. The key here is to be able to keep the, to change that pattern, to add to that, that pattern, to ch change behavior, to, um, to, to navigate left. You know, if you always go right, you go, you know, you go left. And, and that's how we create new neural pathways in the brain. But for many people, they get locked into a pattern, a behavior, and they have a hard time changing, shifting from that. And so that, is a, that becomes a very um, 
almost like a static, because nothing is static, but almost like a static program, a static way of operating, static uh, behavior. Um, now you've got the a particular belief about yourself, um, which which has everything to do with that pattern. So now you're you're locked in in all these different levels of being locked into this program, which is why religion works so well, and um, you know. Uh, all these other constructs like you know corporate government constructs, even on your job right. uh there's just it's it's everywhere we are bombarded by it and the consequences that are associated with considering intercepting those patterns everything in our environment is sort of set up to to remind you in different ways to stay within the confines of that pattern or that particular program and so people stay within that construct and they don't have they you don't have to do anything per se heavy duty to keep reinforcing that particular uh behavior or brainwashing or um mind control that kind of mind control that we're talking about um in one way yes was essential to this particular level of the game in order for uh, human beings as we know human beings to be uh, those that we see as part of our human experience um, needed to operate based on this a collective understanding and agreement of what life is going to look like from the idea of birth to death. And so we have these base belief systems that are base programs, um, base patterns that the brain looks for uh, and operates in that manner. The people around us. Things that happen reinforced the the truth of this must be so, and so that's how it's happening all around, and and that is a form of of yeah, of brainwashing and the commercial support, it whatever that may be, because there's so many levels of this thing that we're dealing with, so many levels of it, um, that you see why everybody's sort of caught and how challenging it feels like to try to awaken from that to shift oneself out of it but that's those of us who are even aware of that most people are not most people are completely not aware of it and if you try to present any of these any kinds of concepts in reference to that people are going to defend it even people people who think that they are in the know and so they keep hanging on to that. So, so it is. This is a masterful engineering that we have here, and that that those minuscule levels of mind control um, impact everything that is greater, transcending outside of our reality per se, our our little human game. Into it spills over into um, those engineers and and and. Forces. I, I don't even. I don't even know if I want to use the word forces. But those who exist in a more aware level of high-level technology, it it, it's, it makes it a lot easier to explore, examine, and see how human beings are operating within this little ant farm that that we're in. <laughs> and that it absolutely is. I mean, like when you really sort of pull back and. You know, that is sort of what you see. Um, I'm thinking, you know, like, so we're talking about this sort of base level here, like consensus reality, right? And how, how, much, how much of that does operate just on this sort of general level of mind control that is sort of held together, you know, through these sort of frequencies, pattern matching, through language, right? Through like this sort of agreed upon language that is, I think a major part of language of and non-language because yeah. our first language is symbols. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so we have, that's, that's what I mean when I say it's, it's, it's just everywhere. It's the language, but it's symbols. It's, we don't even have to say anything mm -hmm. to each other and energetically this, this, um, these uh, behaviors and concepts are relayed without language. You know, we're operating telepathically as well. We don't realize that. I mean, it's all radio waves, so the thoughts are like everywhere and we're walking into everybody's field anyway. 
So we're intercepting um, every, each other's fields and we're operating within a framework of uh, these, a particular uh, base perception of reality, a particular pattern of reality. And that, yes, and that base level that we're talking about is super important to all of it. No matter what kind of mind control we're talking about, because the only way those levels of mind control can happen is because it had to happen on the base level, on the, the, the I, 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 I want to say the beginning stages, but I don't think that human beings, or when we, when we were part of, when we came into this space, I don't think that we were always this. But mm -hmm. at whatever time we started to become um, this, then that kind of um, groundwork was laid for everything else that would uh, happen. Because people would forget, you forget what you are. You forget that you're more than this. So the, the brain, the, this uh, interface system um, is, the, is a major player because it is taking the messages from, uh, from, from your thoughts, from the mind. You know, it's like they're working together in terms of what comes in um, to the mind and then that feedback field uh, connected with the belief system that got planted uh, there in the first place, whether it be the collective belief system or the collective belief system is huge because the individual belief systems are, are spin off of that system and then you've got the perception that obviously is created from that and then of course the brain what does the brain do the brain is only going to operate based on all of those conditions the perception and the belief system provides the information and the thoughts that are going to be processed right from, from the individual are going to be within a uh, limited uh, construct of thought and those thoughts are being processed coming in like the light frequencies coming in through the ventricles in the brain and and coming in and bathing all the cells through the spinal fluid and the whole being so you you've got this pattern going you're yeah you're you're a thinker you're you're amazing we have thoughts but the thoughts have boundaries on them according to the core belief system that's been established and the brain will not show us anything else or do anything else for us outside of that particular um, pattern of belief that, that needs to be there. And, and that's the way it has been sort of across the board. No matter how aware one may be, everybody's a little bit infected with this setup. Do, do you think, because as you're speaking, I'm thinking, you said that you didn't necessarily think that we were in this condition when we first came into this space, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing it like, the way mine works is like, okay, so I like to go to underground warehouse parties, dance music parties, right? And mm -hmm. like when you get there before the party starts, it's just a blank, empty black room, right? There's no right. sound, it's just nothing, no decoration really. And then, you know, people get there and they start setting stuff up and, you know, whatever. And so it's, people are doing stuff. And then early in the night, the music will start, and it's usually a fairly minimal, it's a, a very minimal sort of sound, right? So mm -hmm. is it like when we came into this space, we were here in maybe a condition that isn't what we are now, but then there was some kind of frequency applied that got us right. to start sort of moving a certain way. So in the beginning of the night at a party, you might have some very like minimal, slower kind of music and whatever, right. and people will start rocking a little bit. And then they'll start slowly adding in more sounds and more layers and more frequencies. Right. And then it start, they start, the music starts to get faster. It starts to get thicker and you know, gradual build up. Right. Build up. And then all of a sudden, you know, when it's, when kind of the room is full, then still start the visuals and there'll be a visual right. show. So then you have, you know, visuals right. coming in and then about 12 or one o'clock in the morning when the headline DJ comes on, then you have the laser lights come on. And right. Right. Have, right. The smoke machines start spraying. Right. And then you have, at some point, a ton of people in there, all moving around sort of in unison, each sort of with their own, um, maybe way it's affecting them inside their head, but mm -hmm. you know, and, and they're projecting some of that, that out. So you're almost like, 
even though there's all this stuff flying around, it's creating a certain sort of hive mind in that room to the point mm -hmm. where when people leave the next day, they'll be like, man, the party had the best vibe. You know what I mean? I felt like this. I felt like this. I felt like this. And 90% of the They're in a zone. They're in a zone. Right. A certain zone. 90%. So is that sort of what you're saying has happened here? We're basically like in the large warehouse with the variety of, you know, they, they sort of somehow, whether it was by some, the, the architects of this situation, or someone who sort of figured out that we were in a space and that manipulation could occur, they're, they're, they started with the base frequency that sort of got everybody like- Gradualism is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a gradual process. And I think part of this too, um, because as Randy had mentioned earlier, yes, if we, we get put in our minds, we do see ourselves, yes, as being victimized by who they are that did this. And I think that that's, some, that's a place we're having, when we start to become more aware, we start mm -hmm. leaving that place because we realize that we are the them, yep. we are the they. And, um, and I think that, well, I don't like to use the word like say I think because there's an awareness that I have, there's a memory, there's, a, there's an understanding that I do have about it. But um, there, there's a point where we come down this, ladder then which is we say of frequency and i think that on the in the visible visible light spectrum because you've got the visible what is it the visible light spectrum before you hit infrared and infrared moves down to the hertz field or radio field which is where we have these bodies so we're not we can't really say necessarily yes when we came onto this space that we necessarily were even in these bodies because these bodies mm -hmm. were are constructed specifically to process the uh, the gaseous laws of this space of this reality, and this became essential anyway. This became essential in order to experience because what this is a, a sensory system. So in order to experience. Um, you know everything touch you know emotions all that stuff we had to have these bodies now it is quite possible that over time as we know you start getting carried away you start you know you start getting carried away with this thing and and you know how emotions mm -hmm. get into the mix yeah gradually there are changes that began to i think also occur gradually as we became more immersed in this third dimensional field and all the thrill of feeling and experiencing and processing, I think there's a lot that began to happen. Were there engineers? There's always been engineers. I mean, um, just as we are doing right here now with different things, uh, engineering this, this, uh, this concept of, uh, of reality and then coming in and participating in it, except for you can engineer it, but you can't get to know what it feels like. You can't get to experience it unless you um, somehow, um, in a way, I'm gonna use the word split off, but in a way mm. have a version of yourself that becomes part of this, almost like an avatar, um, that becomes in, invested in this experience. And so, yeah, so over time, yeah, there are different, different kinds of adjustments um, that I think gets made, but it's kind of easy to do because human beings, our brains are uh, networked into a, into, um, a system that, um, that goes beyond here. You have to be. Everything is connected beyond space and time, beyond, 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 beyond. But in terms of this particular construct of reality, there are layers in terms of the actual uh, networking, um, the networking system. And I always like to also say that when we breathe in and we breathe out, we are receiving and transmitting. Mm -hmm. we, we can't not. You're receiving, we just don't know we're receiving information. Because yeah. in the very oxygen, in the very air we breathe, in all the gases, what, what is everything? Nothing but data. It's yeah. all information. Yeah. So in the sun, you know, there's data. That's the data that we take in on different levels. Yeah, we know that the sun we take in and we get um, the, um, 
energy fuel, um, we, they call it vitamin D, but there's a whole lot more that comes in. And since we can't absorb it, all of it in the skin, all of that information, mm -hmm. Um, it through the skin, then it goes into the plants and we got chlorophyll and we take that in. And so what I'm trying to say is look at the many ways in which information is actually coming in and feeding and supporting this reality. So it is very easy to intercept a particular kind of belief system and information, since everything is made up of data, everything is made up of, of information, um, it, through various means to get that information uh, in to continue to support a particular interpretation then um, of reality. And there was something else I wanted to say around, um, around the, uh, the, the brain with that. Um, the other thing is that we, for the most part, believe that we, who we see, what we see as people, as reality, is like this one dimensional concept of everybody on the planet. And I think this is super duper important. Yes, it does tie in with everything, with the idea of mind control, all of that. But we have this perception. That's a perception that's sold to us. Everyone on the planet. Every, you know, we get this concept that all the people, we have all these people on the planet and everybody is operating by the same rules and laws. We don't even know who, what everyone is. We yeah. have no idea. This is another level of the programming that is administered, that is presented to us. And, and again, you know, our brains go, okay, that's what you're working with. That's what I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to be showing you exactly what your perception will allow you to see and to believe and to operate in. But I found, I realized it a long time ago. I don't know that there isn't everybody that is experiencing the birth to death concept like the one we've sold. To me, those things are a game changer. If you can just stretch your mind and just let go of many of these, these uh, beliefs that, that's been presented to you and just start questioning, that in itself breaks any kind of spell. It starts breaking yeah. up the spell. It starts to make it more difficult for you to be programmed. I'm not talking necessarily being taken off and, and being mind controlled because you mind controlled all day long anyway. So it makes it a little bit more difficult for you to be intercepted like that. We are more easily intercepted the, uh, when our understanding, when our awareness is operating in a particular field, a particular frequency. You have to be operating within a particular zone, a particular frequency um, in order to be, yes, more vulnerable to, uh, to whatever the project projected reality is. Start asking questions that are outside the norm. You don't even have to ask them of anybody, but of yourself. You start asking um, outside of the norm and the acceptable, and you allow yourself to ask those questions, that it starts to break things up, and the brain goes, aha, uh -huh, okay, maybe we move a little bit more of the filter. And you start to break up that model of reality that's being presented to you. And ultimately we start stepping beyond that frequency because that frequency is actually very low. We think that because they're doing uh, mind control that they're doing high level stuff. No, they're only able to do it within a particular frequency, a, a particular field. They have to operate within that particular zone. Your brain waves have to be in a particular field in order for that to happen. You start going beyond that. The only thing that takes you beyond that is, is awareness, is taking off the lid. That's it. You, you take that off and you stop going, oh, no, well, that's not possible. Things can only be this way. You're a prime candidate, in, like everybody else that you know of. And that is where you will live until you go through the process, which is the program that they give you of you know, dying and, and getting out of here. All just programs, all just programs. Randy, did you have something to say? I saw you sort of 
nodding along in some spots there. No, I was, well, I was basically nodding because I was, and smiling because of this whole concept that we, we don't really all experience the same reality at all. Mm -hmm. We don't experience even what we perceive as the same reality the same way. And mm -hmm. the more, the more I've been around people and the more I've exposed myself to people who come from different cultures and different understandings, the more I've realized how unhomogeneous this whole thing really is because I can stand and look at something and perceive it one way while the other person looks at this as a completely different situation. And they take something away from that when we begin to experience our reality, as you said, about taking the filters off. I mean, we've got yeah. all these filters. That was the entrainment that happened in the cycle between birth when you're wide open. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and effectively, we think, of, we think of raising children and education, but effectively what we're doing is we're putting filters on a reality because small children come in, they're wide open, the frequencies are all open. And well, that's we why is, we have to shut that down. Yeah, because yeah. You, have to be, you have to be networked into um, a particular version. And I keep using that word, ver word version because that's what we're dealing with. We're dealing with versions of reality. In, and those versions are, it's a particular interpretation of reality that you have. And that's what, you know, you, you're hooking up your kids, your children to. And that's what, this, that's what all of it is about. This, this school system um, from kindergarten on, you, you must prepare the newcomers to, um, to, to be part of the construct that we all appear, and I use the word all loosely, um, appear to be part of. There is a particular version of reality that you are expected to sign up for. It's, it's like, you know, registering for the draft. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you're, you're basically, you know, you come in and your parents just, they just follow along on the same pattern and they get you all hooked up for it. They're like, okay, they give you what they can at home uh, based on their programs. And then it's time to go off to kindergarten. And you go to kindergarten or preschool or whatever it is, and they get they get that going, get that brain going. It's like this is how you will operate within the construct and within this version of reality. You will not go outside of that. So we're going to give you your times tables, which is something I talked about um, some years back. How important the timetables are, because timetables. Um, if you look at it, it is a pattern. It is a belief. Two times two is four, you know, uh, two fours are eight. There is a specific understanding of a quantitative value that must be invested in and believed in, and the brain takes that pattern. And that's why money gets so is, can be such an interesting thing, because what we're playing with is a formula of a numeric system, a value system, and one that we must all agree on for that game to work that certain way. And we change one, on change, you change. dollars five dollars and so on. And when you change one element of that reality system, you now have mixed it up in a completely different way. I mean, two plus two equals four, right? In a base 10 system. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It could, it could be anything. It, 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 you know, it, it is whatever we say it is. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it is. It is. Now, and if people go, well, that makes no sense. Well, just look at this. If you try counting according to this numeric system we've come up with, you will never reach an end. You can't, there's no end. You, you could count <laughs> till eternity. You will never reach an end. Why? Because numbers really don't exist. Yeah. Because it doesn't really exist. But it exists in order for us to have a particular version and interpretation of reality and for us to have the kind of pattern constructs that we have that have quantitative value applied to them, uh, a particular amount of um, 
of energy to support the pattern, again, of a chair or of this body. It's a particular amount, a particular formula um, of energy that forms that particular pattern. So we're seeing, along with the money stuff here, uh, that, that we need those numbers in order for us to have these ideas of our money to be the catalyst anyway, which is why we say it's a current because it's ever flowing. But in order to get this experience of a little or a lot or, or um, poor or rich or any of that, we have to come up with this game we play, the story that we tell ourselves and the system, just the basic system, the fact that the system can keep adjusting the value of what we call a dollar, value of money. $5 can be worth now 10, or depending on the economy, it can be worth two. That tells you right there if that not you're real. playing a yeah. game that you do not realize that you are playing a game. You have just played that game of money. And when you look in your wallet for $20, we are already wired for what twenty dollars is supposed to be we know if we have two tens we're gonna get twenty dollars we can have you know we can have twenty ones um but it's gonna come up to twenty dollars but in our minds we are specific about it i know i had twenty dollars twenty dollars can't become forty dollars in our minds it can't become that because we have this pattern in our minds of the rules of this game and that's what it is there are rules to this version of reality, and that's what we're playing. Like any great game, it's rules, and we are basically we have basically been operating in those rules. Now, people like you and I are like, you know, we've we've gone rogue where we're like, <laughs> we're like <laughs> not, <laughs> we're like, I'm, I'm not gonna be playing that. I'm not gonna be playing that. I'm I'm seeing that these are rules now. As we go along, and the more you understand is the more you, you don't fight. This is, you don't even fight the game. You're not fighting it anymore. But instead, you, you figure it out and you realize, ah, okay, so everything is really responding to me and what I really believe deep down and so on. You start really experimenting. You start seeing how things actually do take cue from you. Mm -hmm. But the reason why life keeps being what it is is because the cues that you're giving are based on that program that you're operating from. So it's just going to keep giving you that. But if you are at war with it, it just keeps you in a loop and it'll just keep rolling out more stuff and you feel like you're stuck and you can't get out. Again, we've said it. It's a criminal freaking game. <laughs> this game is insane. But there is a science to it. And, and that's what we're starting to look at. And we have to, if, if anybody says, you know, I really want to know, because people, people say, you know, how can I escape the matrix? And some people get irritated when I go, but it's not about escaping. Escaping just means you're running away. For me, it is about mastery, it's about transcending it, it is about hacking it, it is about breaking those codes, it is about hacking my own mind, it is about getting my, giving my brain the permission to remove filters and so that I can see more and more and more. And that's what happened in the 90s with me. I didn't know what happened then, but I realized that with my diligence at what I was wanting to, to do and to understand and to, to hack this, didn't even know the word hacking, but that came off. Something was removed and I began to see more and more and more. Now, I didn't understand everything, obviously, because um, it's gradual, um, but I started to be able to see like behind the curtain more and more and more. And the more I have released, the more I don't need reality to be specifically what everybody calls their norm, the more I don't need that is the more I get to see. Mm -hmm. It's not, you can't see it. It's not it keeping itself from you. It's you keeping yourself from it. Yeah. What are you going to say? I thought you were going to say something. No, no well, I mean, you, you, like you just said a lot of amazing stuff there and it's brought up a couple of things. I'm trying to decide where I want to hop in here. So in some ways, what you're describing is like, a computer and an operating system, right? 
And like, you know, if you, um, and then you have plugins, the, oper the computer and the operating system has plugins. And then you get into this situation where like, some people are running one operating system, they might have the same kind of computer, but some people are running one operating system and another is running another one. And so things can't quite coincide correctly. And, you know, sometimes people, I'm known for doing this, don't necessarily want to update their operating system, right? Right. You'll keep mm -hmm. you gotta you'll upgrade. You'll keep using it as long as you can until eventually it, it now be, it forces you to it forces and as you. hard as you can too let it, let's point out that emily right. is the person who opens all the windows <laughs> leaves them open forever i do that goes, too you know my computer's not running very it's fast slow, but at least i know why at least i know why going, oh my god that's exactly what i do i <laughs> open all these windows and then it slows the computer down and it slows it down but it, but also like i don't i i don't like it when like the way the different you know programs and applications i don't like when it changes how they look you know what i mean because i'm used to it being one way or whatever so i'll resist the upgrades to the operating system or whatever especially with phones eventually they'll force you into it because they want everybody to be in that same right. homogenous mm -hmm. reality that we're mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. so i had that thought and then you were talking about how you don't know if there's an everybody right that's <laughs> right? One, that's another one that jumped out at me too yeah and yeah. then you know and you know one of the great realizations when some of the veils start to come off is all the people are not necessarily people, right? Yeah, well, you get a lot of extras. A lot of extras and whatever. Ones, yeah. And then, you know, so, you know, you were talking about how, you know, once you start to become aware of things, you notice things, the game will sort of respond to you and interact. And I'm thinking of, you know, that experience you just, you and I just had last week when we were at lunch, right? I t we're sitting there. And I'm telling you, dude, the chick that's sitting on the other side of the window, right? Remember that? So mm -hmm. I had been um, dry. I had been driving the night before, and you know, I listen to YouTube videos while I'm driving, but I can't watch them. And sometimes, so there was this one I clicked on that had, was by that guy Vrilex who makes videos about cloning, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I know you know the story, but I'm just sharing with the audience. Right, so, right, you right, right. so like it had the video the thumbnail for the video had a picture of the actress name. i can never remember her last name but her first name is ruby she's like a very androgynous looking actress she was on a season of orange is the new black she's australian she's very pretty um but you know extremely androgynous looking and it was about cloning but it was this was one of the videos where there was no sound you have to watch so i just turned it off and i didn't ever get to watch the video well sonia and i walk into the restaurant they sit us down at a table and we're sitting inside, but right through the window on the other side, outside, that same actress is sitting right there. And so the whole time we're sitting there, I can't say anything because the window is so thin or whatever, but I'm like going, oh my God, this is weird because this woman person is not a person. There is no, so I just, you know, this guy had a video about cloning. And, you know, when I saw her on Orange is the New Black, I thought she was interesting, you know, but like, yeah, there was something weird about her. This person gave off no energy this person was not a person but somehow you know that with my level of awareness where it was like that thing had come up in my feed and my the game just showed it to me i'm going to put it right here you can you know and you can decide for yourself whether this person is a person or not and i'm telling you i don't think that's a person <laughs> <laughs> right? but it, it was that fast you know what i mean like the game showed it to me that quickly and it was really weird. Like she's sitting there and she's very pretty. And obviously she seems to think she's real. The person she's dining with thinks she's real. And probably every other person in that restaurant, except for Sonia and I, probably thinks she's a real person. So it has to do with levels of perception. Um, but it was really trippy. And then the yeah. person that came and sat down next was clearly a person, had so much energy coming off of them that it was like almost agitating me. Right? <laughs> you know what right. I mean? So it was such a noticeable difference. But this is what we're talking about in terms of layers and levels of perception. Like, I think even some of the people who are not people think they're people. <laughs> well, there's so much of it. And, you know, one of the things that I have said, I know I say a lot of trippy things too, but. We like um, it. Keep saying these it. Are, these are all things that, you know, obviously, you know, I've, I've come to realize and I've written about it. I wrote about it in a journey of possibilities. Um, you know, is that, yeah, we're, we're all program streams. It's just different kinds of program streams um, because everybody wants to think that we think that we have this perception of what we are. And like this person that you're talking about, 
it's a program. I mean, it's a program stream. It's a program, but what does that program represent? You know, um, that that's the question. What does that program represent? You know, what is the purpose of that program? Uh, whatever that purpose is for that particular kind of program. And then there's the program of uh, of Sonia Barrett and, um, and 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 of you, but there it's a, it's a almost like a more like it's an evolved. It's a, it's a completely different thing though because of the experience that this is supposed to have. Now, let me back up with that again because the reason why I can say some of these things, and this is what I I also see and understand. The reason why I can say that is because I keep wanting to point out to people you keep thinking that who you are is this. The, and, and that's what makes it diff challenging for people to, to, to uh, look, accept some things is because they're like, yeah, but I am or we or whatever. And no, this is just a projected version of, of, of uh, I can't even say you're so, I can't even find words to speak some of this stuff, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a projected, um version or concept um or or program that, that is a character that's identified mm -hmm. as me as sonia and 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 all the things that um will define you know sonia and sonia's purpose in the game uh and all of all of those factors but that's not to the totality of me and people will say that oh no we're you know, we're, we're um, spirits having a human experience. They don't believe any of what they've said. They have a perception of what spirit is having a human experience because they'll still turn around and they'll still be all upset about this, mm -hmm. about all of this part. No, this, <laughs> is, this is not, I'm, I'm coming in, you know, as I say from back here, I'm coming in, whatever that, whatever we are, that, that is like so large so so uh, unconfined is operating this right and the 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 character um that has been created around this specific uh interpretation of who sonia barrett is supposed to be or who emily is or or who randy is and uh, the genetics that are involved and all the information and we look at that you're transferring information from what from my, my, your mother and your father data data from your uh, bloodline uh, and and also from the collective human experience so we're just passing on information and that information changes or some of that information will uh change according to the evolution of that environment that one is born into but then there's some base um, rules, some base information that has to remain there. And some of that information is information, such information as the information required to continue to construct the same kind of human vehicle with the same kind of sensory system. Those are like base operating programs. They don't go anywhere. They can be evolved, but chances are we just keep living that over and over and that's why the you know i don't i know we weren't talking about that but I was gonna no, say that, and that's why the, the human dies that that's yeah. why the, the 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 vehicle dies for um for the being is because there's no evolution it's the same same data that's being passed on and on and on and on and so the system the body the system um is is wired or, or programmed um, based on the instructions from the brain to shut down if the human does not, I think, um, uh, reach a, a particular, you know, frequency in terms of awareness, it, it starts to shut you down. And most people are not asking profound questions most people are operating on their religious programs, which is a box. Your purpose, you, you, you just, you run out. The, the brain is like, what? there's no reason to be here anymore. There is nothing new coming in. It's mm -hmm. the same information, same thing. You're living this repeat pattern. You're on a loop, you're on a loop, you're on a loop. 
And that's the way this base default program, as I like to call it, is set up. Then you out of here. You just waste the space. <laughs> you're just, you're out of here, you know, and it just goes on like that. We, we come back in, but you know, you have to. You have to in order for at some point, potentially, um, the individual or the human race it, it eventually evolves. There's a slow evolution that happens with the human race on a collective level, whatever that human race may be. And I'm speaking in terms of the version that we seem to be familiar with, the version and interpretation of what the human race is. Um, there's a gradual evolution, a slow evolution that I call a default evolution, default program, that happens. Because if the human is not waking up, if the individual is stuck in the same pattern of, of, of belief system about what they think reality is, and it goes just a little bit further, and it doesn't go where any, any bigger, then after so many cycles, hence we go back to that 104,000 year cycle based on all these smaller cycles, um, the, you, we, you see through all these, these um, indigenous uh, groups and all, all of these beings that have said, or all of these cultures, uh, ancient cultures that talk about these cycles. This is what it's based on. This is why they see the ending of a cycle uh, and the beginning of something new, is because those are default upgrades. Yeah. That's what they are. They're default upgrades. And when the individual, um, if, if the individual awakens to a level of awareness and go, oh, okay, so really, I'm not really controlled by this, but as long as I am zombied out and I am just operating like this, then, then the system is designed to do a collective upgrade. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to wait on the collective that, upgrade. Yeah, that's what I was just I, gonna get at. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay, I get it, boom, it's on. I'm moving, I'm open, I'm like, yes, I wanna see. That's something completely different. But the people that we see, um, for the most part, that are shown to us anyway, in our reality, um, do not, um, uh, are not necessarily doing that. Even the people who call themselves aware and spiritual. And anyway, when you gotta do all these labels, that tells me that you're also really asleep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and it, it is. It's it is the being. It's just being. It's just being. Too many labels. All these labels, because of how the game is set up, the game operates off of all these little things. It just keeps you more there because now you're being something specific. You gotta be specifically yep. specifically that. And it just thinks you're playing with it. <laughs> like the kid, I mean they're the puppy. You know, it's, it's like they yeah. think you're playing when you're mopping the floor and it's like jumping all around and getting them up. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, you're, you're, you're doing chores and it thinks you're playing. And you know, <laughs> what we're saying, so what you're saying here really is to jump this system, to really be a rogue, you have to be in a constant state of challenging your own perception about what reality is, ch challenging your perception of who you think you are and who the people around you are. And we need to be doing that to each other. And so, you know, it's, you know, those of us who have, you know, consciously chosen to go rogue and we want to jump the system, not escape, right? Not, right, not escape, right. but j jump the evolution. We don't want to wait for everybody else. You know, right. I mean? it's imperative that we are constantly examining, what, examining and challenging what we think, who we think we are, Get who I moving. think you are, what this Absolutely. all is. And, and not, mm -hmm. ever, not ever become firm on a decision as to what we think it is. Right, right. There's no yeah. finality because it's only go, it's going to show you according to what you can accept. So every new level of awareness, that's where you are, that's where you are, then, then that's, what, that's a filter that, that comes off and you're able to see that. And you just keep being able to see that. Nobody's take, keeping anything from you. Nobody's really doing anything to you. But it's what we don't understand that makes it feel like things are being done to us. And certainly on one level of the game, the way it is set up, yes, there is that, that those moments where you do see that, well, well, why are they doing that to those people? And those are the things that we have a hard time with. Why are those people suffering there and, and, and this happening over here and, and, and all of these factors? 
And what we must remember is that you can't say all of what we just said and realize that everybody really truly is here um, as a free agent on this ride and this experience. We can't say that over here, but then it doesn't apply to anything else. Because there's a reason why you did not elect to be born in a war-torn environment. There, there, there are reasons why, because your game and your journey did not call for that. It didn't call for that environment. You are where you are at in every moment because of what your game and your story calls for. Uh, and so that's why we moved. That's why we, you know, I moved to California and, and, and I see why. I just had this so driven to move to California from high school and it didn't happen then. And, you know, and then I was still driven and, uh, and, and impulsively, you know, I, I got here, I came here and it was, and as soon as I drove in, I'm like, wow, I'm home. There was never a moment of thinking, oh, why did I do that? But this land in this moment down to the very location, maybe where I lived when I came in, this land was essential to me and the growth that was going to occur mm -hmm. and maybe the people that I would meet and the experiences. And my parents brought me all the way from Jamaica. I needed to be born on that island, in that land, to those people to that particular experience, but I needed to be out of there by a particular time so that I could be in Illinois, you know, and you look at your story, you look at the chain of your story mm -hmm. and you see, and then, you know, then, then here, here I am. But then when I look at all this growth and evolution that happened here in California, and I see what that land um, has provided me with, why perhaps I, I needed to be here to make that happen. So it's all of that that we start looking at and being open and not just get ourselves all locked into um, to these comfortable, finite conclusions about what reality is. I don't care what the scientists say. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't care what they say because that's why they keep changing it. That's why in 10 years they, you know, they are like, oh, you know, we, we thought that such and such, but now we realize it's not. Well, if you want to wait around till they come to those conclusions, you can. But what I realize is that well, we that, that that's like that's like the approved uh, upgrade to the operating system, right? That, 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 and we don't have. I mean, everything that Michio Kaku or Neil deGrasse Tyson or all these, you know, whatever whatever people think they are, are saying right now are stuff that you said eight, ten, and twelve years ago, and you chose right. not to wait for them to acknowledge that to move on. So now they have the new, slightly bigger Russian doll than the last one that they're containing all of the. It's so people. funny though. Yeah, it, it is amazing to to watch that, you know, to see that, um, you know, cause you're just like this, uh, as far as everybody's concerned, this little person, but then they get on because, you know, yeah, they do have their uh, physics degrees and, and, and so on and so forth. And, and so it's fascinating when I hear them come with, you know, what they've just like discovered and we're talking about this stuff. I'm like, that is like so old, so old. <laughs> you know, I'm like, that is like so old. But people need permission. Mm -hmm. People are programmed to, uh, uh, to need permission to uh, believe a certain thing or to think a certain thing. Um, they're, they're just programmed that way. They, they need that, which is why religion, once again, works and government works, is because we need yep. somebody to, one, take the blame also, and mm -hmm. need somebody to tell us what to do because we are also programmed to believe that we don't we're not equipped enough to know what is best for us well also people have like people you can see sometimes a person who wants to do something or has a desire for something but doesn't allow themselves to do it because that's not who they thought they were or right. who they think they are even though it's very clear to anybody observing that there's something that they want something that they want to do or an experience they want to have and they you don't even have to have the government or the religion church or whatever the person will stop themselves from doing it because that isn't who they thought they were or what they liked thought they liked or what they thought they wanted they just, got, just they just basically got convicted by a jury of their peers <laughs> <laughs>
Guess what, guys? That wraps up the first hour. My gosh, that went by. Oh, so wow. Fast. So you uh, unpacked a lot of concepts, and we're going we're gonna to continue down that road on the other side of this for our uh, subscribers on Patreon. And I think we're going to go into a little bit more about, um, well, how to engage all of this in a conscious way. So we'll do that. We're going to say goodbye to you folks on YouTube and on the public channels. And um, we'll say hi to you folks on Patreon again on the other side. Before we do that, Sonia, you want to tell people where they can find you? And I also think you have a new radio show coming up. You want to tell people about it? Yes. Um, well, you know, the real com is my website and it connects you with with everything else. Um, so it's the real com, And I guess I do have a new radio show coming up on KPFK. I co-host the show right now, but it comes, my show comes up in June and it's called the expansion zone with Sonia Barrett. Uh, and it's on KPFK 90.7 FM in Southern California. And mm -hmm. there's, you, know, you can go to kpfk.org um, to also find out more and to listen to it online. If you're not, in the U.S. And listen to it. Sonia has, is the first person on our radio show who has not been kicked off of KPFK. So <laughs> we've had a few on our show who've been kicked. We, you, but if you end up kicked off, you'll be in the good company of Cynthia McKinney and Danny Katz. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I know the game. That's why. You know, well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. they're very, the two of them, while I love them and respect them, and Danny's my good friend or whatever, they're they're mad, they're, they're mad and they're challenging the system. And you're like, I do not even care about the system. I'm yeah. sitting over here and do this. And so you're, yeah. I, I don't, I, I think you, 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 you get it. And so it's not going to be a problem. And I look forward to uh, being able to enjoy that in the car. <laughs> awesome. <Yay. laughs> All right. We'll see you on the other side, guys. On the airwaves. FM. Wow. We'll be back. I don't know, 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 I don't know,